Is the Machine Plus worth it? The quick answer is probably not for most people, but if you are really committed to making it your primary dedicated workstation, then possibly, but with some caveats. For the long version, I'm going to go into a lot more detail about what that entails and why that is. But first of all, a quick disclaimer, I've got this Machine Plus on loan from Zounds.com, so thank you so much to them. If you'd like to check out the Machine Plus for yourself, be sure to hit up the affiliate link in the description. So I'll be sending this back pretty soon so I can try out more gear, but I've been using it extensively for a solid couple of months. This is probably coming out a bit after I've already sent it back, but that amount of time plus Plus, some pretty heavy use has given me a decent idea of who this is for and who this is not for. I should also quickly mention that while I am going to do some hands-on demonstration in this review, I did a full dedicated video showing you the entire process of creating a beat from scratch, so I'll link that at the end of this video if you want to see the entire beat making process. With all that out of the way, let's start talking about the device itself. As I mentioned in my initial impressions video, this thing is quite powerful, although a little underpowered compared to what it presents itself as being able to do. Essentially, I think the native instruments engineers were a bit constrained by trying to stick to the exact form factor of the machine Mark III whilst keeping the cost somewhat reasonable. And the net result of this is that the device ends up being a little bit underpowered for what it presents itself as being able to do. If you were to load up every single group and have a bunch of instruments playing at once, you would hit your CPU limit pretty quickly. Typically when working on a track, I end up maxing it out at four groups. And for my own purposes, that's plenty. And that's still quite a bit more layering and nuance than I would get with a much more budget groove box. So for me, that's pretty impressive. And the CPU limits aren't a huge deal. But if you're on the market, three and are used to being able to have a ton of elements all going at once, you might end up being kind of annoyed by the limitations with this thing. You do have to use a little bit of forethought and be kind of careful with how you layer. And maybe they would be able to make it a little more lean with a firmware or software update, I'm not sure, or maybe it would take a Machine Plus Mark II to really nail down the power of this thing. But regardless, if you're an existing Machine Mark III user who just really wants something standalone, this was basically made for you, but it's really good to know that going in. If you're a current Mark III user who doesn't really mind having it connected to a computer but would like more power, this is not the device for you and I would consider upgrading components of your computer instead. But if you don't mind being somewhat careful with your layering, bearing in mind that it's still a lot more than you can get out of something like the Circuit or the Roland MC-101, and if you would really like to break away from the computer, this thing's pretty damn nice. The Machine Plus is so far the closest thing that I've used to a proper DAW in a box. It offers you an incredible amount of control and quite a bit of power while still remaining pretty damn hands on, which is very impressive. And you don't even end up staring at the screen too much. It's definitely an important part of the workflow and you're not going to get away from the concept of a screen entirely, but it makes it much more manageable. And once I got my head around how all the different windows were interconnected and changed the functions of the knobs, it became pretty intuitive and the workflow just disappeared into the music making process pretty quickly. So that's the other group of people that this is for. Even if you're newer to the native instruments ecosystem like I am, but you're looking for a proper self-contained studio this might be for you. If you use this as your primary music production platform and are willing to like commit to that and willing to put up with a few of its limitations, I think you'll get a lot out of this. You can absolutely use this to make incredibly polished music, make full songs, and if you want to have kind of a hybrid workflow, you could always export the individual stems as WAV files and bring them into your computer. If you are just trying to make albums or you're a beat maker and you want something that is powerful, completely standalone, and quite hands-on, this will work for you. This will absolutely be a good primary music production station. But if you've already got other groove boxes, maybe even multiple, and you don't mind a bit of a hybrid workflow between your groove boxes and your computer, or you want to do proper live sets, this is probably not for you. You definitely have to commit to using this as your primary station to make it worth the cost, in my opinion. If you do have a more budget groove box that's just a part of your music making setup that you're looking to upgrade, I would suggest going for something maybe a little more mid-tier in cost, so something like some of the Roland stuff or some of the Akai stuff. And if you're trying to do live sets, as far as I understand, this thing can definitely do some jamming, and I've used it for that, but if you want to do an entire set, you're probably going to get better results out of something like a circuit, maybe something by Electron, or possibly the Deluge. But beyond simply being a really fancy groove box, the Machine Plus also has a bunch of other native instruments stuff 
built in. Of course, you can load in machine expansions, and it's got some famous native instrument synths like Massive and FM8, which is really cool that that's in here, but I would temper your expectations slightly for how much you can actually tweak on here. I think a lot of people are going to find themselves designing patches in those synths just on the computer and then loading them into here, which is fine, and that's the same experience you would have, say, with a Roland MC-101 or an Ovation Circuit, and you still have access to the full power of that synth in here, but that's good to know going in, and I'm actually going to very quickly just jump into the interface to show you exactly how much you can and cannot tweak when it comes to synths and effects. I've got a massive patch pulled up here. And if I want to go ahead and edit that, I go to plugin instance and I can go ahead and either add stuff like add effects, just throw in a compressor just for an example, or I can actually go in to a bunch of these parameters. And the first page of parameters is all the macros that the patch designer added. So I've got stuff like tamper, Wow. Release. All this stuff, once again, set by the patch designer. I can start going through different pages and get to the different stuff that's a little more tweakable. It's a little more limited than a lot of people, including myself, would like. So you've got stuff like EQ, some master stuff, effects, oscillator, parameters. And even then, it's like... Maybe not as much control as you'd like. For instance, you'll notice as I page through here that you can't even change out the wavetable type, which is unfortunate. Mod oscillator, filter stuff. This is definitely very useful to have access to. More stuff related to the filter, uh, unison stuff. Envelope stuff. You know, a bunch of stuff that's really useful to have some mod stuff, but it's not all that visual, especially compared to Massive's interface. And I can't really imagine trying to make a patch completely from scratch, especially one with any kind of complexity. So in essence, this functions a lot more like a preset playback machine and less like a hardware synth where you can do in-depth sound design. You've definitely got some stuff that you can tweak, but for some people, this might be a deal breaker. For me personally, it actually isn't, although it is disappointing. It does make up for it a bit by how much you can tweak the effects, and that helps you shape a sound quite a bit, a lot more than I have on previous groove boxes that I've used. While it definitely is nice to have massive FM8 and some contact stuff all built into this device and working completely without a computer, you're definitely not going to get to have access to their full power without a computer. So you're still going to have to embrace the kind of back and forth workflow of designing sounds on a computer, loading them into here, and then tweaking them to fit your specific project. However, as I said, there is a decent amount of hands-on control, especially afforded by the effects and also by the mixer. This is another thing I wanted to quickly dive into. So I've got a beat pulled up here. <laughs> This is super nice because for one thing, you could just select a pad. It will give you access to that track and then you can like turn it up or down super easily. This workflow ends up being super fast. And then you press in to get access to the panning and you can very quickly just move through different elements and tweak your mix in real time. It's very hands-on, much more so than on a DAW. Of course, this is something you also have access to with a non-DAWless machine, but having this in a DAWless setup where you do have a really fine amount of control is really nice. And you can go more general with it. You can select the group and apply effects to that as well. So like this is just like a bunch of drums. And these have like a compressor and a limiter and some reverb on there. And then on the master, you can also apply effects. For instance, I should probably apply a limiter here just for safety. You can also do stuff like setting up sidechain compression, all that kind of stuff. That's a lot of control. It's very hands-on. So I guess the point I'm getting at with all this is not only to show you some features and limitations that are very important for you to know about going in, but also to show you why I say this thing is awesome, but potentially not worth it. Some of these limitations are really not a big deal for me at all, but for some people, they'll be absolute deal breakers. And for me, I do find that it makes it harder for me to justify the kind of steep price tag for myself. But that being said, this thing has been an absolute inspiration machine for me, pun not intended. Over the course of having this thing, I've developed this ritual where every Saturday morning I will sit down after breakfast with this thing by a window and just 
make beats. And it's got so much stuff packed into here that I never find myself reaching for an external synth or for my actual DAW. I can make everything within this, and it's been an incredibly inspiring way to make music, and one that is really conducive to what you would call high-density fun. So I want to close this video out by playing some beats that I haven't played before on this channel, so hopefully these will give you a little bit more of an idea of what this is capable of and the kind of creativity they've kind of unlocked for me. Notice on this one, the fact that the CPU is basically maxed out despite me only having a couple of groups. This seems to depend on which virtual instruments are loaded and what is contained within groups. But in this case, there's not a whole lot going on here and yet it's filled up. But in other cases, you have surprisingly complex beats that take up very little CPU. It's a little bit odd. It kind of fluctuates a little bit. So that's something to be aware of. A couple more beats here. This one is a pretty good example of one that's fairly complex and isn't using a ton of CPU. <laughs> And let's do one more. So to bring all this together, who do I think this is for? Because of its cost and relative complexity, I would say this is not for beginners. If you're a beginner looking to get into groove boxes, I would consider something like a circuit. If you are a beginner looking to get into the native instruments ecosystem and the machine ecosystem, maybe try going for a machine micro because that is significantly cheaper and that gives you access to a ton of sounds, a ton of instruments, and still a very hands-on workflow provided that your computer can cope with it. This is also not for people pretty content with their current groove box or machine experience. If you're using budget or mid-tier groove boxes and you're fine with it, don't let gear lust get into your head. Just ignore this and keep doing what you're doing. And if you are currently happy with your Machine Mark III experience, just keep doing that, especially if you're trying to have a hands-on workflow and get away from the screen, but don't necessarily need to get away from the computer. But if you are a fan of the current machine stuff and would really love to break away from the computer and don't mind taking a slight hit in processing power, this might be for you. Or if you're looking for a premium beat making experience that is the be all end all of music production stations and you use it as your primary thing, maybe record some synths into it occasionally, this also might be for you. It's definitely not for everyone, and I'm still not sure if once I've tried out a ton of groove boxes on gear loan from Zounds, I'm not sure if I would end up buying this. I'm definitely tempted, but as a content creator who's trying to try new stuff all the time, that's a bit of a toss up for me, and I wouldn't necessarily be comfortable recommending it in all cases. It's fairly specific, although it's definitely the closest thing to a DAW and a box that I've used. It's impressive, but maybe it's got a ways to go before it can get more mainstream acceptance. So those are my thoughts on the Machine Plus. If you've got some additional thoughts, be sure to leave them in the comments below. And if you'd like to see more videos I've made about the Machine Plus that kind of demonstrate what it's capable of, you can click or tap somewhere over here. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll be back with a new video in a little bit.